All right, we're in it. This is binder number nine on my channel. And just so you know, these cards will be available on my eBay store, user My Man Justin. My store is called My Man Justin's Collectible Emporium. And here, let's check out this card right here. It's the Arcanine EX from EX Legend Maker. And it's got a great artwork, you know, Arcanine's here in like a fire, fire spin tornado around him. It's pretty nice and detailed artwork. The condition is really nice. This is the kind of card that I will definitely list as an auction and I'll be putting it up tomorrow on Sunday. And the reason for that is because given that this is a more desirable card in a really nice condition, this is the kind of card that you want to let up to the buyers to decide what it's really worth. Um, especially given the condition, this is going to be a really nice card. Um, maybe 60, 70, 80, maybe even $90. Here, the Dragon Frontiers Rayquaza EX. The condition on this one is going to reduce the value a lot. It's hard to see, but no, you can see. A lot of creasing, a lot of bending. So this one, I'll let go really cheap. Um, it still looks nice in a binder. This is good for this is good for people that are on collecting on a budget, and it still looks good enough. So where you know if you look at it in a binder, you don't notice all of the the bending and creases that much. So it, it allows people on a on a lower budget to be able to collect these kind of higher end cards because in a mint or near mint condition, this is sixty or seventy or maybe even eighty dollar card. And in this condition, it'll be much less expensive. This is the Crystal Guardians Charizard. And this is just an, uh, a rare holo. So this card actually does come in reverse holo with the stamp of Crystal Guardians here. So that card, I think, is worth a little more. I think the stamps on the EX Series cards does add a little bit of aesthetic value to the card itself. But nonetheless, even this card in a rare holo, some people actually like this card more without the stamp. But this card is in this condition. Um, it's in really good condition. I might even consider getting it. These are the kind of card. This card as well. These are the kind of cards I would think about grading. Definitely, it wouldn't even be an aggressive, great, uh, aggressive investment at all. It would be a very safe, conservative investment. Because even in a PSA 8 minimum, it's still going to be a good investment. There's still going to be a market for it, and it's still going to be valuable. So this card right here in this kind of condition is probably going to be worth around $50 right now. And it would be another card I would consider listing as an auction, whether it's graded or not. This is the Holon Phantoms Mew EX right here. Another desirable card in the current market right now, especially as the EX series cards become increasingly popular and increasingly desirable for collectors. And like I've said before, I think this is due to the fact that a lot of the collectors that have been in it now and, and have ventured out of the Wizards of the Coast sets have come to find and appreciate these as the really nice pieces of art that they are. Um, years ago, I mean, you could get these cards for uh, probably a fifth of the price that they are right now. So they've increased in value dramatically, and I think that that price is going to continue to increase. I think in a couple more years, we'll probably see uh, about the same type of increase. So these will be cards that are worth investing in long term, especially in the higher grades. Those are really going to go up in value. This card here, um, given that it's probably going to be worth under 20 in a raw condition, I wouldn't get this graded. It would still be a good investment, not not even super aggressive for a grade. And given the condition, this, this would be a potential card to grade. If I were to sell it ungraded raw, I wouldn't list it as an auction. I would just have it as a buy it now because it's, I don't like to list too many auctions at a time because... Um, it, if there's too many valuable cards listed at once, you can reduce the overall value because there, there's not um, 
as much available money to be spent by the people that are buying. You know, that, that maybe they can't spend uh, you know two thousand dollars on on cards in one weekend. So I do like to space it out. So that's one kind of uh, tactic I use to, to make sure that I'm getting the proper value for my cards and not uh, undercutting myself. This card, unfortunately, it's got the crease in it. This collection had a mixture of between near mint to light play to played cards. So this card will definitely be listed as a buy it now with best offer. I always include a best offer, uh, best offer option just to show my customers that I'm willing to negotiate. I want to make sure they, they know that my goal is to get them the best deal that I possibly can. I want to be competitive to any other buyers. And that's one thing I've seen with people is some people want have an idea of what they think they should get for their cards, but that's not really how a market works. It's the market that determines the value of your product and the buyers in that market and the situations in the market that lead to the value and desire of the product. So you have to kind of accept that, that you don't really get to determine. And if you try to do that and you think it's worth more than it is, then it just won't get sold. And here's a Dialga Level X. This is another nice card from the either the Platinum or I believe the Diamond and Pearl era. And these cards that I've talked about, these Level X cards, I think they are undervalued right now. I don't think they've reached their full value yet. Because I think they, I mean, they, they have a very similar aesthetic to the EX cards, which have proven to be uh, increasingly desirable for collectors. Um, but they're just a little farther along in the series. They're a little newer. So I just think that collectors haven't fully got around to them yet. And there's still a lot of collectors out there that have yet to come across these and start really appreciating them for what they are. The only problem with these sets, I think, is that the there isn't a lot of Level X cards per set. And the artwork on the commons and commons and rares is sometimes a little uh, underwhelming compared to the EX sets. So that's why I think those cards haven't completely reached their full value yet, but I still think the Level X cards have um, increasing, have their values to be increased in the future. Here's a Team Magma uh, versus Team Aqua Anti-EX. This is one of the EX sets that I see much less of. It might have been printed uh, lesser than some of the other EX sets, like Holon Phantoms, Delta Species, and Dragon Frontiers. So these are a little more scarce, they're a little more valuable, and it's, uh, it's a really nice, I mean, just it just shines so well. The whole card uh, has the holographic pattern uh, beside the box. It's also in really nice condition. Another card, very, I will have to consider grading because the condition is so nice. Um, it's never good to, you know, miss out on a PSA 10 because, you know, if this card sells for $50 in mint near mint condition, it'll sell for $350 to $400 in PSA 10. So it's always something to consider when you're selling raw mint cards that have a potential to make a PSA 10 grade. It's worth, uh, you know, putting off that um, short term $50 in your pocket. Here's a nice Groudon EX from Crystal Guardians. Same set as the Charizard. Groudon being a legendary Pokemon is gonna carry a bit of a premium. The condition is in light play, I would I would say. Um, it's nice that the uh, front looks decent. There is a little bit of a creasing right there. So that's gonna greatly decrease the value. And of course, uh, cards in this set, in this condition would not be worth grading. If this was a base set first edition card, it would still be worth grading. And that's one thing to consider when you are going for PSA grading. Um, I have talked about cards that are generally thought of to not grade in lower conditions. For example, the Gold Star cards. Uh, those are still kind of, people are just going for the higher grade PSA gradings on those. But I think those would be um, a wise investment to be first to market on lower PSA grade gold star cards like the Groudon, for example, um, because the the raw light play cards I think are undervalued because 
the mint near mint cards um, have such uh, attention on them from buyers people just want the higher grades so there is potential for good investment on lower grade PSA graded uh, gold star cards and there are other cards that I'll talk about in another video about PSA investing but for this one I don't think this would be a good investment for you know this would make PSA four or three or something um, and that would just be too low I think given the card and the set it's just um, I, I don't think it'll ever be desirable in that low of a grade just being a standard EX card May maybe there are other EX cards like for example this Espeon EX from Unseen Forces that in the future since it's even illusion um, in an EX card this card would be the kind of card that maybe you could get away with a lower grade like a five or six and still have it be a good investment and a desirable card for for other collectors um, so and this one again this is another really good condition you can see a little bit of wear on the corners that's gonna take away from the grade I think automatically right there you can say that it will not make PSA 10 and that's something uh, uh, when I'll make that PSA the, the grading video um, it's, it's good not to be idealistic um, PSA 10 is incredibly hard grade to receive gem mint means it's virtually flawless if you can look at a card and notice anything just from a quick glance that pretty much disqualifies it from PSA 10 Here's a Diamond and Pearl era promo. This is a card worth around 15 to 20 right now. And that's a that's a pretty s solid price for these cards. Um, for, uh, I would say 10 to 20 for a lot of these cards, um, except the Level X cards. You can actually get these for five or six, seven dollars right now, as well as that one. Um, and, even, and some of these, uh, less popular Pokemon EX cards. These are also going to be uh, around the $10, depending on condition. If it's in a lesser condition, you can probably get it for under $10. But I would say generally, they're going to be around 15 to 25. And this one, yeah, this is le not as good condition. It'll probably go for under 10. Here's a Salamence EX. The condition on this one, I believe it's got some yeah it's got a bend on a crease bottom right border and then it's going to greatly take away from the value probably be around 20 under 20 I would say and mint near mint that's going to be a 60 70 dollar card so um, condition is going is just a huge factor when determining value for Pokemon cards and that's one of the things that's that's why it's when you buy collections like this it's 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 hard to evaluate when you have a lot of cards in various conditions ranging from damage to, to near mint to mint um, because you have to give an offer that will you know keep you safe as a buyer because it's not a good thing to um, you know invest six hundred dollars in a collection and end up you know there being a, a, a higher amount of damage or light played or played cards than you thought and all you end up doing is breaking even and you put in all that work and time and investment and risk of investment just to get your money back so that's something that you always got to consider and when you make your offers you got to give conservative safe offers this card right here this is a card I would say I would call for a an aggressive investment the EX Delta Species cards is um, it's a nice set it's a very popular set right now and a PSA 10 or even PSA 9 set of the reverse hollow rares in this set is getting more and more desirable and there's still not a lot of people that are doing it but there is some so there's there's gonna be um, competition you wouldn't exactly be first to market here's a Typhlosion from Dragon Frontiers I did a whole video on a complete reverse hollow set where every card had the Dragon Frontier stamp. I have that listed on my store right now at seven hundred dollars for the complete mint near mint collection. And this card right here, it's it's increased in value a bit. It's gonna be about twelve dollar card, if I'm not mistaken. 
Here's a Diamond and Pearl. Darkrai as well. That's level X Palkia. There's another EX series card. These are always, these are just getting more and more demand. But when you see these cards in collections, they are, you should definitely, they, they should definitely uh, spark your interest because especially if you could potentially get them in really good condition. And that's one of the kind of things that I'm, that when I buy these collections, I'm kind of gambling a bit um, in hopes that some of the cards will be in mint, near mint condition so that I can grade them and really look to make a profit that way. But uh, given that some of the collections have so many cards, it's hard to, you know, to have the person take a front and back picture of everything. Sometimes they don't want to do that. I just want to get it off. And just by asking it, you can you know lose their interest. And I'm gonna do a whole video about how to negotiate, and that could work for Pokemon cards or um, negotiating anything. A couple more uh, the level X cards. Like I said, you can you can get these for rel re relatively inexpensively still right now. They haven't reached their full potential value. This card got a few of these. They are the World Championship promo cards from 2007. So definitely older. Um, this was in the champion set. John used it. The Flygon EX. They are always going to be worth less than the Flygon EX in the set, but um, I think this card would be worth around ten dollars, maybe less. There's all here's a few more of the World Championship promos. All these, all these, all these. Here's a Dragon Frontiers Latios. This is in, again, this is like a, I think it's like a light plate condition. Yeah, I, I, I would call this excellent. That's, that's something I'll talk about when I talk, when I make the video about evaluating cards. The, there's a difference between a light play and an excellent. And I think it's good to note that because you never want to um, over evaluate your cards, but you do want to accurately as possible because you want to get what your cards are worth. And if you, Call a card light play when it's really not light played. It's just kind of uh, been handled or um, maybe mishandled or mis um, misstored. Uh, uh, this one I probably actually would call light play because when they start having creases, then I would call it light played. If it only just had some light wear um, on the back, that's when I call it excellent. But e but e even so, this is going to be around a fifteen dollar card, maybe maybe even a little less. Here's the Jolteon EXs. So here, so I've talked also a little bit about reverse hollow rares. Now in the newer sets, these are almost never worth listing individually, but some of the older cards, uh, I believe this is Mysterious Treasures. Uh, a legendary Pokemon rare reverse hollow these are cards they're gonna be worth around five dollars and are worth listing individually especially in a nice condition so same with this Salamence and these are these are cool for collectors too because since they're not the EX or GX or full art kind of uh, cards they're a little less common, so they're nice for collectors to, to add to their sets that are collecting, for example, Dragon Pokemon or Salamence specifically. It's a nice little set of Dark Ryan Cresselia. There's a whole on Phantoms Latias and a Delta Species Latias. Dragon Frontiers for Alligator, Rare Hollow. These are both Rare Hollows as well. Uh, it's about seven dollar cards. There's a whole on Phantoms Latios. 
And here, this is the Gold Star Jolteon, but it is the World Championship promos. So it's still a valuable card. I've actually even seen people getting this card graded. It could be worth it. Might just this is the kind of card I'll put up for auction. Most likely, just sell it raw, because I do because because there there is a situation where you got to pick and choose because you do need to get money back on your investment if you don't just have like a whole bunch of money from something else or something. So I do need to have income in consistently. So I do have to sometimes sell cards that I would rather get graded. So I got to pick and choose. Nice Groudon, pretty nice condition, looks like it's near mint. These kind of cards are always of interest to the base, um, base set evolutions in the newer sets. A little less common, a little less seen, and as you can see, there's something common with this set, uh, Diamond and Pearl. I forgot which Diamond or Pearl set it was, but you can see there's a full hollow bleed, and that's pretty cool. And that will make it worth a little extra. Because the whole card is holographic. Here's a Mysterious Treasures Charizard, another kind of more obscure Charizard. And I, I like having these cards in my store. It's, it's nice to have the diversity rather than just the super rare stuff but to have these kind of cards as well they're a little more affordable and still very necessary for any charizard collector in this case this is good condition this is actually another card that i would say would be a good pretty much any hollow rare charizard card reverse hollow, hollow rare charizard card is going to be a good uh, investment for psa because there are plenty of people that want complete graded charizard collections This is kind of a little more obscure card. It's from the EX Trainer Kit. It's a 10 card set. This is number four. Another thing to note that this uh, lot had was Pop Series cards. So this is from Pop Series 5. This is actually the same. This is the series that has the Gold Star Umbreon and Gold Star Espeon. So these packs are really expensive. This is one of the things I talked about in a market analysis where about a month ago a pop series 5 pack was 80 to 100 dollars now they are upwards of 200 dollars so we're seeing lots of increases on older on older products sealed and raw so since this is from that series it's going to have a bit of a premium because the packs are so expensive there's a Gardevoir and a Hello Gyarados. So th these are all like nice cards to sell um, individually that are that are just reverse hollow or rare hollow cards from sets that um, are are a little less expensive. But still, I mean, if a card is worth five dollars, it's going to be worth listing individually because even after fees, you'll you'll still be clearing four dollars. And if you sell a thousand four dollar cards a month, that's four thousand dollars. Here's a really nice melodic artwork. I, I personally really like the the melodic Pokemon. It's just like a really glamorous Pokemon, very pretty, and uh, part of the Platinum series. There's also a shiny melodic, which is also a really nice one. I had a PSA 9 variation a while back. I'd like a PSA 10. Um, so yeah, a lot of melodic collectors out there as well. Hold on, Phantoms. This is one of the rares. Deoxys. Here's a Crystal Guardians Blastoise. So this is the counterpart to that Crystal Guardians Charizard we saw in the beginning. It's going to carry a premium. 
have some Wizards of the Coast era. This here, this is part of the General Mills cereal box series. It's got a really nice hollow pattern. It's like fireworks. There's a few more in this set like that. Some more reverse hollow EX series. Um, Here's another one of those firework kind of patterns. There's also this EV right here, it's part of that same set. This is a uh, Power Keepers, right? You. It's got a nice environment in the background. It's like in a forest meadow. I think it looks really nice. It's a nice color to it. And of course, ride shoes and Pikachu's. There's plenty of collectors for that. Here we have the legendary collection, Reverse Hollow. It's the only one in, in this collection. It's actually from a different collection, uh, but that's some real fireworks. And this is actually the first set to have Reverse Hollows. This is when Wizards of the Coast decided to try out this idea of making every card in the set in Reverse Hollow. And I think it's a really cool set. I mean, to to see um, a, an entire collection where every card is just shining like this, uh, I think that would look really nice. Um, there's some investors that just stay away from the legendary collection, um, so I don't really have a comment on it. I, I'm not um, actually that versed in the market of legendary collection. I haven't done a lot of investing or collecting in it. But I will say that I do like that artwork. This card here, uh, this this kind of packs a punch in, in several ways. Ditto being a very popular Pokemon, Pikachu being a very popular Pokemon, and the EX Reverse Hollow cards being a popular set. And uh, so this card here, this could be uh, worth around fifteen dollars. Uh, these two cards here, I actually just sent into PSA. To get graded, uh, they were in mint condition, possible gem mint, and given the increasing value of this set and the number of evolution collectors, I thought this was a good investment, uh, somewhat aggressive. But uh, so this one here is definitely going to be in light play, but I'm sure it'll sell quickly. This one's in mint and near mint condition. And it's also the reverse hollow, so that's going to be a fairly valuable card. Probably around $20, $25, maybe even more. The market right now is just changing so quickly, it's hard to, it's hard to say what any, uh, any value on a card is on, on any given day right now, because it's increasing so rapidly. Here, th these are the kind of cards that I've talked about before. Uh, I wouldn't sell, like, given that I have the full legend set of the dogs um, I would not sell these individually it's nice to sell meaningful sets together when you can because you re reduce on your own materials uh, cost shipping cost and listing fees so it's nice to be able to have a nice little collection and people that collect are, are looking for this card anyways probably would want the full collection anyways so these are the kind of cards I look to sell in meaningful sets and it's it's really cool to see them all together like that they're older cards and below that we were talking about the pop series before we also have a complete pop series set of the legendary dogs so you can kind of see the evolution of artwork i think these the artwork on these the, these were made during the EX series sets, so a little bit before these. And I think they're kind of reminiscent of the Gold Star artworks a bit. So you can tell that they're kind of made around the same era. They look really nice. They're part of the Pop Series 2, so the second Pop Series set. They look really... They definitely have that EX series artwork style in them. 
and they'll, they'll be another set that I sell uh, together. Some more reverse hollow uh, stamped cards. Here we get into some reverse hollow rares, and again, we got some more EX Team Rocket returns, and this is this is my probably my go-to set right now. I've talked a lot about them. The artwork is phenomenal. It's totally unique within the set. Whereas you know, like uh, EX Delta Species, Hole on Phantoms, and Dragon Frontiers are kind of similar in their artwork. Um, with Dragon Frontiers, uh, what making it unique though is that every card in the set was Delta Species. Uh, you know the um, energy type change uh, but this set is just very unique they, they, did, they did a great job of capturing that darkness the Pokemon are always in aggressive menacing kind of poses and these are all non hollows but they are a card that uh, they're very scarce on eBay right now, so they carry a premium just because so few people uh, have them listed right now. There's one more up there. And then we get into, these are just some rare hollows and reverse hollows from the Diamond and Pearl and Platinum era. Um, these are cards that m most of these I would probably sell individually, um, although they're also cards that I would potentially sell in a, like a lot. Like if there's five from Mysterious Treasures, I'll just sell it five times lot of Mysterious Treasures Hollow and Reverse Hollow, rather than sell them individually at two or a dollar fifty each. And here's just more of that same kind of same kind of cards. All this there is some EX. Uh, there's an Arceus and Hidden Legends. There's another. This is a Pop Series Four promo. There's another Pop promo. Pop Series One. So just so you can see artwork from the very first pop series. And quite a few cards from this set came having full hollow bleed. And you can see you can see there too. There is a full hollow bleed. A little harder to see you can see there so that was something common I noticed with these diamond and pearl or platinum sets so there it is binder number seven hope you enjoyed it hope you saw some cards that piqued your interest and maybe you wanted to add to your collection like I said they are all going to be available on my store um, user my man Justin I'll be adding them on my store throughout this week and I will see you on the next video. I'll be making another video after this one about some more uh, insights and um, market insights and tactics and uh, advice for buyers and sellers and collectors. And I'll see you then.